Hello, everybody. Joseph Reed with Singing News, and we are at the Singing News offices here in Hendersonville, Tennessee, with very special guests. I have Shanda Tripp and her yes. daughter Hannah. Hello, yes. ladies. We Hello. are happy to be and here. And I said daughter, but these people that are watching on Facebook are like, no, they're sisters, surely. <laughs> Definitely daughter. <laughs> uh, I want everybody to know who Shanda Tripp is because we're going to be talking about a very special book yes. here in a minute that yes. you uh, authored and yes. Hannah contributed to. As yes, well, so tell us about Shanda Tripp. Well, thank you for having me here today. Nice to meet you yes. today. Uh, I was raised on the mission field to Mexico and to Haiti, traveled all the time my entire childhood, and then met my wonderful husband, Rob Tripp. Uh, we got married in 2000 and married into the wonderful Laverne Tripp family. Mm. My husband was a Grammy Award winning producer, yes. which not a lot of people can say that in gospel That's music, right. no. but he is a Grammy Award winning producer. And he had been on television probably from the time every day from, if not three to five days a week from the time he was 15 years old. He was a powerhouse in the uh, music business. Yes. Very talented, very funny, personality plus, and through crazy circumstances, he had stepped on a box screw on a screw in a box store parking lot in February. Mm. And we did not know it, but he had infection in his body all year until finally he had emergency surgery in May of 2021. And ultimately from there, he never recovered. He had infection continuing to grow, even though he went to the doctor every single week without fail. So he ultimately went home to be with the Lord mm. December the 8th of 2021. And that's a whole story of its own. But, um, you know, only the strong survive. And so yes, me and my daughter are sitting here today, victorious that we do know Rob is with the Lord. Yes. And then 71 days later, <clears throat> my mother in love, Edith Tripp, known around the world for her music, her singing, her cooking, mm. just being an amazing person. She yes. went home to be with the Lord and to be with her son 71 days later. So to say we've been through a lot is a understatement. And people ask me all the time, oh, you're, uh, they'll say, oh, you're so strong. How are you so strong? To the point that I finally, I, I honestly started praying about it. I'm like, what in the world? I'm really not that strong. But the Bible says in our weakness, uh, he is made strong. Yes, ma'am. So if you perceive me as strong, you're just seeing the strength of the Lord. That's ultimately what it is. And I'm thankful I didn't get saved the day Rob died. I knew the Lord well before that. So that's why it matters what we are doing every day. Uh, if you're having a good day, you still need to read your Bible. If mm. you're having a good week, you still need to go to church. You need to be surrounded by God's people because that's been the only thing that has sustained us. But I can tell you that the body of Christ is alive and well mm. and very valuable to people like us. Mm. So we well, are here today with the testimony. Of course, your father-in-law, Laverne Tripp, Laverne Tripp, and Edith uh, hosted on TBN for years and, years and years and years on Praise the Lord. And, of course, we had a mutual friend, Carmen, yes. uh, who I worked for for several years, um, was a good friend of your parents, loved them. Mm -hmm. We talked about them very warmly uh, when we talked about them. So, so much tragedy over the past year that mm -hmm. you have been connected to. Um, before that, now I also want to add in that you're, you and Rob are successful pastors here in the Nashville area at Fireplace yes. Fellowship. The Fireplace Fellowship. We uh, founded the church 18 years ago. Yes. Mm. So you have been dedicated to ministry, as My you said. Life. Your yes. whole life has been around ministry. My whole and life. We were talking yes. about that before we started today. Uh, yeah. We have very similar upbringings with that. And then in, in this year of tragedy, before all of that even happened, you had already completed a book. I had already written a book called yeah. named She Was Healed, which how ironic is that, right? right? It's taken out, uh, out of the Bible, Luke chapter 8, the woman with the issue of blood. Mm -hmm. She said to herself, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I know mm -hmm. I will be made whole. And the Bible says... Virtue left uh, Jesus's body and she was healed. That's the mm. only time in scripture that those three words are said. But she really? was healed. Yes, she was healed. So I, Edith and Hannah and I had talked about writing a book for years. Mm -hmm. And I remember one day that thought just leaped in my mind. And I know exactly what part of the road I was on. Everything I called Edith. I said, I think I got the name for our book. And I told her, and she said, oh, I love it. So uh, Edith had been asked to write a book many times over the years by some of the biggest publishers. Yeah, sure. And she always turned it down. Mm -hmm. 
she would always say, wouldn't she, Hannah? I just don't feel led. That was her famous right, right. words. <laughs> so Hannah has always been a gifted writer. And Edith wanted to really support Hannah and do anything she could to help her. Mm-hmm. And myself as well. Mm-hmm. So I, it was uh, my idea, and I'm the one who put it together. And then Edith and Hannah contributed to the book so edith contributed three chapters and hannah did two chapters so it is three generations of women sharing their stories of how you can overcome isn't it ironic or maybe the anointing rather that brings three generations of women together for a perspective talking about she was healed same topic yeah regarding women as the woman's right. story in the Bible, she was healed. Then you have three generations of women. And then right after that, the unfortunate loss of right. your husband. And then Edith yes. passes away. Mm-hmm. Then the book is released. Yes. And now there is even a, another added element of healing with regards to your personal life. Exactly. Because you're going through a grieving process. Right. Exactly. That's just real life. That's real but life. But what I admire about you so much is whenever you walked in here, and we just met, even though we've talked before, we just met, is how you're not out of touch with that grief. You face it, and you understand it. But yet, you do display strength, okay. which I know, as you said, comes that from the Lord. the Lord. And yes. I admire you for that because what some people can do is shut down, shut the church down, That's it. shut down the ministry, quit mm-hmm. doing what we're doing. We've seen loved ones who who fought and, and, and went on to be with God. Right. We could just say, hey, you know what? I'm not going to do nothing. I'm going to sit back. But no, God called you to do something. And now your ministry takes on a new level. And I believe that the future yet to be determined or yeah. spoke about uh, for you starts right here. It's a whole new testimony. And even for you, Hannah, you, you're experiencing the same thing. This, this is your family. Um, and I don't want to dwell on that part, but I do want to say that I admire you for uh, continuing on with what God has called you to do yeah. through this book. And now you can help people in a whole new way. A whole new way. Yeah. So it, it just I, adds on to your ministry. I feel like my daughter especially is a testament. Mm-hmm. to the legacy and the gospel that Rob preached, that Edith preached around the world. Mm-hmm. And it's still true. It, our gospel that we preach and believe, the Bible, is not based on anybody's circumstance. Right. It doesn't matter. And so many times people, when certain things happen, oh, well, that wasn't true like you just said in mm-hmm. the Bible. They, they'll completely change their doctrine based sure, on an sure. event. Mm-hmm. We believe the Bible because it's the Bible, no matter what. No matter right. what. So we've been tested and are being tested even this day on that fact, what we believe. But I'm proud of Hannah because I think she's a, a great evangel carrying on that evangelist anointing that Laverne and Edith have carried all these years. And it's it's not going away. Mm. It's still so, Hannah, you're a contributing author to this book. Tell us uh, a little bit about this book and your perspective and what it says to people who will read it. Well, first of all, I've been a pastor's kid for almost 19 years. And with that, there are things that pastor's kids go through Mm -hmm. that are not seen. Mm -hmm. So there are stories in there that I've shared that I've never told before. Things that I've mentioned on how I got through certain things. But yet, I'm not bitter because of it. A lot of people will be bitter um, by the church. Mm -hmm. uh, Church hurt, pastors. But through the stuff that I've experienced, I let the Lord handle it and I let the Lord take care of it. So that's some of the things that I wrote uh, in the book. And then after the circumstances that happened um, with the passing of my father and my grandmother, I, I looked back on some of the stuff I wrote and thought, do I still believe this? Is this still... Um, a part of what I believe and at the end of the day it is because mm-hmm. um, 
easy was never promised, but victory was. Mm. And that is what I have now come to believe in my faith. Um, no matter what happens, no matter what uh, circumstance comes my way, that's what I believe. So, And we have, we can get into this whole thing. And I got to tell you, I was one of them. If you do things right, which I had, <laughs> I paid my tithe every day of my life. <laughs> I've missed church twice, I think, ever when I had a baby and when I was in a tornado. Oh, I'm just man. saying. Yeah. So I had not opened the door to the devil. I had not, you know, you can go down all why things happen. You try to explain it. But if you really want to talk about the Bible, all the disciples except for one died a horrible martyr's death. Mm -hmm. So it, it, she said it, it, we weren't promised easy. And we mm -hmm. can we can get out of that a little bit, like think or assume our life is supposed to have a certain level of easiness or uh call it whatever you want but no bad things happen mm -hmm. but sadly we live in a fallen world and bad things do happen to everybody it rains on the just and the unjust so sure it's enough. just one who's standing is the one who had built their house on the rock and as far as edith and rob go 100 million quadrillion percent they are with the lord yes and they have achieved well, we all are trying to achieve or longing to achieve. So how can you really say that's a, that's a, it's our loss or grief today, but ultimately they did what they wanted to you do. You also can't stay in the valley of why. You can't yeah, you be cannot. questioning, why did this happen? Why did that happen? Why did it happen to me? Why did, yeah. but. You can consume yourself with that right, if you start. You can. Stay stuck. And, and if you, you do that, that, you will never be able to move past and do what God's called you to do and be who God's called you to be. So that's what I had to get through in my mind. If I stay here, I ain't going uh, mm -hmm. to do what God's called me to do. So yeah. it's kind of outdated, but uh, you know, Watch Oprah, lay in bed, and eat bonbons. That's pretty much, <laughs> that's what your flesh wants to do. Yeah. Not do yeah. anything and just Binge stay stuck. Binge watch the Hallmark Channel. Where you are. <laughs> yeah. And that's it. And many people do that. Sadly, mm -hmm. they never move beyond mm -hmm. that. Tr a divorce, a loss, even a job loss, so much through COVID, and they're just stuck. Mm. There are so many different types of healing. True. That not only women face, but society as, as this, human yes. beings face. Uh, um that that there's um, mental, s uh, spiritual, physical, mm -hmm. emotional, mm -hmm. um, all of these types of healing. Would you say that the book uh, can encompass all of those? A hundred percent. Thank you for asking the question. We have healing steps in there. We have mm -hmm. practical steps you can take. But let me just share just a couple moments about the woman with the issue of blood. She had spent all that she had. Mm -hmm. So the original problem was the sickness, but the sickness takes all her money. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times the enemy will come in with that second punch, which is what we've been living through. It was the loss of my husband, but everything that comes after that is where the real tragedy can come mm. in. Your kids on drugs, your, you know, me laying up in the bed on drug pills or uh, nerve pills, whatever. That would be the second punch of the mm. enemy. Then she said to herself, mm -hmm. if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I know I will be made whole. So you have to know what you know. And again, this is a season I've been in. You better believe I've had to figure out now, what do I really no. <laughs> mm -hmm. Do I really know God's my provider? Do I really know that he is the husband to the husbandless? He is mm -hmm. the father to the... Do I really know that? So the most powerful voice you will ever hear and obey is your own. Mm -hmm. The world calls it self-talk, uh, your inner voice, your subconscious. What inner consciousness I've heard it called. You can go down that path... But that is the truth. If you've been beaten, molested, treated bad, maybe you've been told you can't uh, ever do any more than your mama did or your husband has done X, Y, Z to you, that inner voice. Mm -hmm. And clearly the one with the issue of blood, she somehow had got it in her inner voice. If I will touch the hem of his garment, I know mm -hmm. I'll be made whole. So we got to change that inner voice. And believe mm -hmm. me, it is a battle. It really is. It is a battle. Yeah, because a lot of... A lot of what we tell ourselves in our mind can actually occur if we convince ourselves of yeah, that. I'm 100%. not worth it. I'm not good enough. I can't do that. 
And you talked about being in the valley of why. If you continue to question it, well, there will be no positive outcome because exactly. you'll be stuck in that. So exactly. that, inner voice that inner voice is what you all are encouraging in this book for people to listen to with the steps in there, helping them understand you don't you don't have to stay in this situation you're in. There is You don't healing. have to stay. Secondly, you got to have a vision or a goal. Mm-hmm. You, she said, I know if I can touch the hint of his garment, I will be made whole. So her goal, her goal, her vision was to be healed Mm -hmm. and to be made whole. 97% of Americans do not have a written down daily list of goals. 97% do not. But the 3% that do are in the top 10% of the wealthiest people wow. in the world, not just America. Well, Habakkuk 2 says Habakkuk to make it, write the vision, yeah, make, it, it, plain. make mm-hmm. it plain. If I gave you uh, pieces to a puzzle and I said, here, put this together. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. <laughs> but if I gave you a picture of a Thomas Kincaid beautiful painting puzzle and said, here's the pieces, now put it together. This is what you're putting together. You could do it a whole lot faster. Mm-hmm. But most people are going around with a bag of pieces of their life. They have no goal, no vision. They don't know what they're going for. They don't know what their plan is. They have no purpose, ultimately. So they ain't going anywhere. Mm-hmm. And you're probably in five years, ten years, you're still going to have a bag of a bunch of pieces. Mm-hmm. People are so talented. We're so resourceful. Believe me, I've learned in this last year. You can figure out a way to get done what you want to do, but you mm-hmm. got to figure out what you want to do. Yeah. So that's another step that we have in the book that we explore. Well, Shanda, I want to thank you for coming by and speaking with us. Hannah, thank you so much. I've enjoyed learning about the book. We encourage everyone to pick it up. It's She Was Healed, available wherever bookstores are sold, or you can go to shewashealed.com.